And as David has said, it's some kind of the overview why at Camda we do what we do, right? So what's happening after the challenge is over and what can be born out of it? So today I'm going to talk about, to summarize the challenges which were 2017, uh, 2020, um, and are coming from the Metasub data. So the data which were presented today in the morning by Krista. Uh, as she has said, the whole project started in 2013, and we have heard about this, in fact, in 2014 at the Camda when we were chatting with Professor Chris Mason. And he told us that it's, the study is almost over, but when he was telling what has motivated him, he said it was my daughter who was asking me in the New York Metro whether I can lick a pole. And as a father, he wanted to scream no, but as a scientist, why not? Do we know whether it's safe or not? So it ended up with the paper, which appeared in 2015. And also in 2015, Chris was a keynote at Camda. And then we are further investigating, OK? So there will be more and more data coming from, uh, from this uh, swabbing in the metro system, what we can do. So we had today a question in the morning whether the meta sub is just for collecting and standardizing the data, or maybe it's doing also the follow-up research. And the thing is that, yes, in Metasub, we do the follow-up research, but this is such a huge amount of data that it's not just Metasub. I mean, we need to open it to the community. And this was then uh, came this, uh, the Metasub with the Global City Something Day, which is now happening every year, and which is producing every, every year more and more data, as Krista was showing, a few thousand every, every year. And of course, we are analyzing it, but then it will be good to open it also for, like for Canada. So Evan has, uh, was showing the potential of those all, the, all data which we can use uh, in, uh, in Orlando in 2016 as an invited, as invited talk at Camda. And in fact, right after from the next year, we already had uh, those meta sub data in Camda. So what was the purpose at the beginning? So at the beginning, it was really like pure data science, digging and seeing what, what we can find there. So at the beginning of 2017, it was that we gave the data from three cities in the US. And the question was, can you find something in those meta whole metagenome sequencing data which will differentiate the cities between each other? And people have started digging and looking into the bacteria, archaea, uh, viruses, some higher, higher um, like the, to, to the plants. And it appears it doesn't matter in which the tree of light they are looking, they, you can quite easily differentiate cities between though know, between each other. So that's why next year we we'll keep adding more and more data and also adding some more context because we wanted to investigate not only whether we can classify from where the sample is coming from, but also whether we can predict the origin. So if I will give you the sample which is coming from the location which is not in your reference database, can you tell me from where? And unfortunately it appeared that this is too difficult question. The classification, yes, the prediction, not really. So as a result, it ended up with over 20 manuscripts in Biology Direct and the Frontiers Genetics. Um, and they were showing that there is a city-specific microbiome profile, which allows to classification with high accuracy. And it doesn't matter how you look into the data, whether you're just doing the classical taxonomical analysis, or maybe you're expanding it to this, uh, looking more into the function oriented, like antimicrobial resistant markers, as we heard today in the morning that they are present, they are very rich in the cities. But what is also is interesting is that what about the chemo approach? So we don't care about the reference because as you have heard in the morning, for about 50% or even more of the reach, we have completely no idea from which organic they are coming from. So we are very limited because of this reference databases. So for classification, do we need to know which organism is it? Or maybe it's enough just to build the pure profile from raw data. And it appeared that, yes, it can go like this. So on the global scale, um, we have some automatic misclassification, like the Lisbon and the, with the New York, Tokyo with Oakland. Another thing is uh, what I already have said that the microbiome composition multilateration is not working. So if we know the three, four, five points, we cannot predict what will be the microbiome profile somewhere in between, because it's not that easy. Like when P 
people are moving and leaving their the traces with the microbiome is not that easy because it's really the ecological niche is defining what's there. And more or less at the same time, oh, sorry, one more thing. So the, those must be misclassifications. So I was saying that the New York and Lisbon, but when you look, okay, they are both at the coast of Atlantic Sea and more or less the same distance from the equator. And the same with the Tokyo and Auckland that the Japanese and the New Zealand islands, they are more or less the same shape and almost exactly the same distance from the equator. So the hypothesis might be that the, the climate might be very similar, which is defining or which will be a major factor uh, defining the ecological niche and by this, which bacteria will dominate in these locations. And once the Kandak community was investigating and digging into those data, 2017 to 2020, in fact, there were other papers coming out which were supporting this way of understanding. So in 2018, there was a paper about the global atlas of the dominant bacteria found in soil, which was claiming that there are just a few percent of bacteria which is everywhere, and they are constitute in fact more than a half, sorry, they constitute like a, a 40 percent of the risk which we are finding. So they are everywhere, but the, 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 the proportion is changing depending on the environmental factors like uh, the pH cluster, dry lands, uh, low productivity cluster. So again, so this ecological niche is defining what really is living there. And even when you look into the sewages from the cities, you can, you can see that the data are clustering very nicely, that European cluster together, North America cluster together, sometimes they misclassify, but again, that the location is producing this uh, this uh, the specific the specific uh, microbiome profile. So this is what uh, we have learned from Camda about this concept, this data, and also what others ha has found. Just to note that all those two papers which I was showing the the, two, the the sewage and the soil they were based on the 16S sequencing, while the metasub is the whole metagenome sequencing, and uh, just. Let's say to support what we found, or maybe what the Camda community uh, has found uh, in the meta sub data. Last year, there was also this uh, paper, which Krista has uh, telling a bit, but I, I just wanted to, to highlight the results which are related to gain to prediction or classification in the sample origin. That it's really very simple classifier uh, can really get a very good performance, reaching as you can see on this, on the B, uh, over 80, around 85%. We can also see that there is a dominant factors, that there are dominant factors which are really specifying or just making, which are connected with the classification performance, like the population, surface elevation, uh, co whether it's coastal or not, population density. So all those factors which are forming uh, the environment where the bacteria are living are really defining what which bacteria species are living in this location and by this uh, making that it's really possible to classify. What also we have found is that, uh, or that there was a, that really this KMA approach is, is a very, let's say, um, perspective, it gives a, a lot of perspectives because you can in fact build an index uh, on the raw sequencing data, which will then allow you to tell, okay, I'm getting the new samples I'm plugging it, making the KMA based composition and telling from where really the sample is coming from. I mean, to, to which of the already known samples uh, from uh, in reference is, is uh, the similarity is the, the highest. So this is all what we, has been published. And more or less at the same time, getting all this knowledge which we gained at the CAMDA, uh, at, my, at my university, we taught with the people who are also working in the forensics, let's try and to see whether we can really make it as an application. Because here we are talking about worldwide, yeah? so the continents differ a lot. But what if we will just look on the one single country, like Poland, which is very homogeneous in terms of the climate uh, and the uh, environment and everything. So can we distinguish between locations inside the Poland looking at this, let's say, soil microbiome? So this uh, has turned out into the project, which is done together with the uh, um, Forensic Laboratory of the Police, the Medical University of Warsaw, the Pomeranian University, Medical University, uh, and the Company Ardigen. And here, the Alina and Michal are the main 
uh, let's say, researchers working on this project. And what we did, we, based on the uh, climate data from the past 20 years, we have identified 80 locations spread around the Poland. At every location, we took three samples four times during the year, representing each season. So together, we have almost 1,000 samples, and each sample has been sequenced at the sequencing depth of uh, at least 120 million per ten reads. In addition, we have tons of the metadata from the collected, collected sites using the Cobo toolbox, so the photographs, a description of the surroundings, everything what can be collected and stored. We also have a result of the physical chemical analysis of the soil samples collected at the locations. Plus we have the weather information for the past 20 years for those locations. So I think uh, we'll be keep analyzing those data for these next five years. We also have applied the, the, the Metagraph uh, approach to analyze those data. So in Metagraph, you plugging in the row sequencing data, which is building the representation graph for every location. Then you merging them, and then you can query uh, for the differenti differential parts of the graph, which is specific for the groups which you are interested in. So in fact, you can create uh, the, the subgraphs which are char characterized for the specific location. And from, the sub and from those uh, subgraphs, you can extract something which is called unity. So this is a longer stretches of the sequence which are unique for the specific location. And based on this unity, we have then designed the targeted panel for targeted metagenomic sequencing. Because we cannot ask police to each time to sequence, sequence 120 million of the reads because they cannot afford for this. So we took the police samples to metagraph, the metasub and earth microbiome samples to metagraph to have like a negative reference. We built this uh, graph, the differential graph, extract the unitix, uh, design the targeted panel, and by mapping to by using Callisto, we create a reference data set, which is then used as a reference for the classification. And then as a second part, once we have a new sample, which is sequenced with this targeted panel, we again making the mapping and using the machine learning approach, right, using also the reference data site, we can predict uh, the origin probability. Uh, in this project, we have tested three different approaches, two amplicon-based sequencing and one probe-based targeting. Uh, and it appeared that uh, the Roche uh, um, probe-based has the, the highest performance. Interestingly, the best performance we, we got not for the uh, suggested 100 nanograms of the input material, but to five, for five nanograms, which in case of the forensics application might be critical because not always you will have 100 nanograms at the crime scene. And we can see on the break curtis the similarity and also the cosine similarity that we are getting very high similarity to uh, reference whole metagenome sequencing, what we are getting from the on the targeted panel. And then it turned out into very nice classification. I mean, this is only for the pilot results because the, the full uh, the full result, the full uh, panel is now uh, will be designed, I mean, within the next uh, few weeks. So the full results will be available like in a half year or something. But you can see that only in one sample we got misclassification. And in fact, so one can say that this is misclassification between the former capital of Poland and the current capital of Poland. Uh, but in fact, both of the cities are next uh, laying next to the Vistula River. So it could be that the influence of the river is dominating for those, uh, uh, for those sites. And this is affecting uh, the performance. And this is showing that indeed it is possible to do this, even for such homogeneous country like Poland. What we'll say, what we can then extrapolate that it then should work everywhere. But this is something which will need to be investigated in the follow up way bigger studies. But here we are only focusing on the classification. And of course, having such rich data, this is not everything what we are interested in, right? We would like to know what is living there, how it's living together, why it's living together. So this is not this is something what we cannot answer at the moment from the KMA approach. But this is what we are investigating in another project when we are saying the concept is if all those bacteria live together, they work together, why not analyze them together to improve understanding? So not just looking one by one into the microbes, but also looking to in the synergies by uh, examining the mutual information in the context of some decision uh, decision factor. So this is the other project which we are investigating and we are uh, working here on those data. And in fact, in this project, we are looking at the moment for the postdoc and PhD student. And this is the, the rest of my lab, which is at the moment also uh, involved in this project. 
So this is my last slide. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to answer the questions now and in the next days, today during the Hamda dinner or in the next days somewhere at the conference. Thank you. Just, I would need uh, to ask that you speak loud to the microphone because I'm a bit deaf. Okay. Okay. Is this loud enough? Is it on? Um, is there a way we can make this louder? Uh, please yell. Okay. Uh, I was just curious, when you built your Kamer classifier, how did you uh, build your Kamer signatures and what machine learning classifier? Uh, so, sorry, I, 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 I do not Maybe hear. Maybe use this microphone. Maybe use one of those. Yeah. Louder. Yeah. I was just curious when you used your when you built your camera classifier. Sorry? When you built the camera classifier. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 So we are even with starting with the plant of forest, we're getting very good performance, but we'd like to go uh, a, a bit above this. But in fact, many studies at the Canada were using Rand of Forest and the basic uh, basic results which we have. Uh, in the in the meta sub paper is also the random forest. So in many cases, random forest is good enough, but we are trying to just make it uh, even better. <laughs>